Hey everybody, this is Joan for MTG Nexus doing a tournament report slash uh, meta update slash uh, deck update for our monthly deck guide. Uh, doing something a little bit different. Um, this past couple days ago would have been Saturday the 31st of August. I went down to Mythic Championship Qualifier in Columbus, Ohio at Comic Town. And I played Boris Byrne as uh, Arclight Phoenix still. On. There's some bugs in the build that need worked out. So, and Byrne is the deck I have the most experience with. So, And it turned out um, from results both at the Mythic Championship Qualifier and looking through the results of the... Uh, Star City event this past weekend, it looked like Burn was a very good choice in the current meta. Um, not a d lot of decks were prepared for it other than perhaps the Stoneforge Mystic decks, which we'll get into with my experiences with those here in a bit. Um, one shout out to another Burn player, uh, kind of a local grinder here in Ohio, his name is Joshua Milliken. He has placed numerous times. He's been on the Pro Tour a couple times. Um, he managed to top 8 with a 6-0-2 record with Burn. I'm not quite sure his specific build, but uh, the build I played in the events... Um, actually, I do need to make a couple of adjustments here. Um, I played a very basic slash slightly older version of Burn this past weekend, and there were a couple of reasons for it. Uh, the first was, I wasn't comfortable going into a meta um, that I suspected might have some amount of Burn with six Cane Lands in my deck. Um, I haven't had enough experience testing with a six Cane Land build, and I've learned that I really want at least six Fetch Lands when pairing with Searing Blaze. Uh, the four and five just feel like you get stuck with Searing Blaze on Sorcery Speed a lot and not being able to play it on Instant Speed during your opponent's turn. I can really come back to hinder you in a Stoneforge Mystic environment. Um, I also want a Grim Lava Mancer. Um, ironically, this is a card that, especially against the blue-white variants and even the Bant variant that I faced, um, is very good because they don't pack a ton of removal, so this just sits kind of as an onboard answer to Stoneforge Mystic, if you can get this down on turn 1 or turn 2 a lot of the times. And beyond that, it was just a very basic deck. You know, a lot of the same 4 of core that I've been running for a long time. Um, you know, very simplistic mana base, not really going too, too heavy on the can lands. And there was a lot of burn. There was probably, in a field of 130-some players, there was probably anywhere between... Six to eight burn decks and another couple of like variants like blue red wizards. I saw at least one or two of those. Um, I saw a couple copies of mono red prowess. Uh, the first three rounds, I ended up at the top tables. I started out three and zero. Fourth round was kind of the turning point of the tournament, and then round five I lost again. It just kind of dropped because it was an eight round tournament. Um, you were probably going to need to go X1 and 1 to top 8. And, um, you know, sometimes in events like that, I value time over money. So I could have continued grinding the last three rounds to try to top 16 or top 32 to get money back or whatever. But I was down there with my brother, and I wanted to enjoy the time. So um wasn't worth grinding those last three rounds, at least not to me. Sometimes I value time more than money, which... Each person has their own different things. I wanted to go down for the experience, take a look at the new meta. Um, it been a while since I'd been in a paper event. I got the old adrenaline rush that I don't necessarily get all the time when I'm just playing in leagues or playing arena, that kind of stuff. So it was nice to kind of get that feeling a little bit again. But, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of why I don't do that on a consistent basis. I tend to prefer to stick at home or stick close to the area. I don't like traveling a ton for tournaments anymore, you know. Us, us old, old magic folk here don't necessarily like to drive three to four hours to grind every weekend. Um, it's just fun to stay at home and play locally or play on Magic Online. Anywho, as far as how the tournament went round by one, round, round one was Jund. 
Um, not exactly sure of the the exact build, but the one thing I I do think I heard from a couple gen players, you know, both. I, my opponents and diff talking to a couple different people was that Jun was not prepared for burn. Uh, the Jun players were under the assumption that um, that the Stoneforge Mystic decks would chase burn out of the format and that they could just focus on the mirror matches, the Stoneforge Mystic decks, and kind of like the Grixis Warza mid range stuff, and maybe a little bit of Tron. So. Both my Jund opponents in round one and round three were very ill prepared for uh, burn. My round one opponent, uh, Mulligan the Six, had a very slow hand. Started out with like a tap land, thought seized on two, uh, played another tap land. You know, very slow. Had like a Tarmogoy finally on like turn four. By that point, they were just pretty much dead. Um, he had Mulligan the Six on the play, and in game two, he kind of the same thing. He Mulligan the Six. Um, didn't really have a bunch of interaction, put a Raging Ravine into play on one, uh, played a Nurturing Peatland as a second land, played a Scavenging Ooze, and never played another land, never really played another relevant spell, maybe he played a kill spell or two on some Goblin Guides, but his his last turn was like Inquisition with Nurturing Peatland, see a hand of four burn spells and he's at like six life, so... That was kind of round one. Uh, round three, which was my other Jun matchup, uh, the results were very similar. Um, it was a rather quick stomp 2-0 both times. Um, felt like the Jun de decks weren't quite tuned for what the meta was going to end up being. Um, I don't know about the Star City events per se. I just looked at the top eight re or the top results in that and the uh, classic down there, so I can't say what exactly the format was down there, but um, I do know at the Classic, a lot of Jun decks at the top tables. Um, I think they were starting to cannibalize each other by the point time round three, round four were rolling around. Um, my round two opponent was a Wurza deck, not precisely like this. Um, my opponent appeared to be on a Esper Wurza list. Um, he had like the Astrolabes, the, the Sword of the Meek, Urza, that kind of stuff. Um, he had, I know he had at least multiple copies of Timely Reinforcements in his sideboard, and Nervousness almost very easily cost me this matchup. Um, game number one was whatever, um, I won fairly quickly. Um, he did a little bit of Durling, drew like Thopter Foundry, but then I killed him before he could like really get it online. Um, game number two, uh, <clears throat> friendly reminder why sometimes it's good to play decks on paper and not just magic online all the time. Uh, so I had suspended a Rift Bolt on uh, the following turn, went to my draw step, drew my card, had forgotten to cast my Rift Bolt. Uh, my opponent was at nine life at the time. Um, I had a creature in play, but it had already been blanked by an Urza and maybe some, it was either blanked by Psy or Urza and some Thopters, so it really wasn't doing much. Um, I was able to, or my opponent had the option of putting it on the stack, chose not to. Um, was that game two or game three? Sorry. Game two came down to actually a misplay on my part. Game, that was actually game three with the Rift Bolt. But game two, uh, my opponent came down to casting timely reinforcements. I had a skull crack. Um, put them to one. I had two can lands in play. Uh, drew land, fetched, cracked one can land, drew a swift spear, cracked another can land, drew another land, and died. But on the surface, that's not what cost me in that game. What cost me in that game was the previous turn se sequence, I had had an Eidolon in my hand, and my opponent... Um, Went to play their timely. If I have played the Eidolon uh, the previous turn, their timely would have put them to four, and the Skull Crack would have negated it. Or sorry, the timely would have put them to two, and then Skull Crack would have killed them. Because so I think they were at. Because they ended up at one at the end of it, so they must have been at four. Cast uh, timely reinforcements. I Skull Crack them, put them to one. 
if I would have had the Eidolon in play, they would have been dead. So it was my missequencing for not putting Eidolon into play. And then they just killed me with a combination of, like, Big Urza, or Big Urza token. I think they had a Batter Skull in play. Did they have Batter Skull in play? They might have had Batter Skull in play. Man, these matches were working together. Shoo! Anyways, that was my miscue. And then the following game, I almost punted by suspended a Rift Bolt. Forgot to cast it before my turn, my draw step. Uh, judge, apparently the ruling now is I missed a trigger. My opponent can put the trigger on the stack. I choose not to. So then the turn is the Rift Bolt was delayed until the following draw step. Uh, my opponent was at nine life. So if I had connected with that Rift Bolt combined with the Lava Spike and the Skewer of the Critics, I do my opponent would have been dead. That gave my opponent another turn to fumble around. Uh, they found a. Thopter Foundry that had the sword, but they didn't have infinite mana, so they were only able to get themselves back up to like three or four, and then between the Rift Bolt and I think I drew another Skewer of the Critics, I was able to kill them. Got very lucky, was very nervous, fumbled around, made some mistakes. Um, my opponent appeared to be rel relatively well prepared for burn for the Wurza deck. Um, feels like it's a really close matchup. I think some of the testing that's been done on the channel and stuff really kind of helped. And then, uh, obviously round 3 I played against Jund, uh, beat that 2-0, then round 4 was a weird one. So, uh, I don't have the exact list, like I'm not a thousand percent sure of what cards were in the deck, but some summation of these cards were um, in the deck between what I saw and what my brother saw um, as my opponent was playing me. Um, he was off to the side, so he wasn't trying to interfere or anything. But I saw Noble Hierarch, Stoneforge Mystic, uh, Spell Queller, Resto Angel, and then I saw a Batter Skull out of them. Um, basically, the game di game one went down. Um, I had a fairly fast start. They had Noble Hierarch and the Spell Queller. Uh, I had two Swiss Spears in play. And they had Path, my Goblin Guide, on one, I think. So it was like uh, Path to Exile and the Noble Hierarch into Cast Spell Queller. And it was a really fun combination of um, my opponent, or I attacked in with the, the Swiss Spears. My, I, played a, or I played a spell, triggered the Swiss Spears. My opponent Spell Quellered it. I Lightning Helix the Spell Queller and was able to cast it again. So I got two triggers off two sets of triggers off the same lava spike um so my basically my opponent uh triggered my swiss spears enough to kill them because they had tapped out um to cast the queller that was game one game two uh game two was relatively close uh i was on the draw and they were able to land batter skull and then they had um enough protection to connect with the batter skull game three man that was game three was a rough one uh i ended up keeping a one lander on the play which was extremely risky i'm not going to sit here and defend that part of it but the hand was land fetch land goblin guide skewer the critics lightning bolt eidolon searing blaze searing blaze Hands insane if it lands a land, second land in the first couple of turns. Uh, first, cast the Goblin Guide, get in, they cast Noble Hierarch, um, whatever else is going on. Um, turn two, they cast Stone Forge Mystic. I untap, only one land in play, try to bolt the Stone Forge Mystic. My opponent has Force of Negation. They're able to land Batter Skull. Finally, draw a second land. Um, I'm able to, at some point I draw a skull crack. I'm able to skull crack the first effect during their turn because they had, um, previously they had gone a turtle witness get back force of negation. So anything I did had to occur during their turn. I was able to skull crack them, put them to, I believe, one. Uh, they started attacking with their batter skull. Um, so my goblin guy was kind of negated. The only burn spell I had left in hand at that point was the Searing Blazes, but I had no landfall trigger. Uh, during the last setup turn they had, um, they had, they cast a Noble Hierarch and path their Stoneforge Mystic. 
me knowing that they had the Force of Negation, I couldn't cast Searing Blaze during my turn to kill them. So my only hope was to get them during their upkeep, but they, between the Stoneforge Mystic that they passed to get an island and the Noble Hierarch <clears throat> um, that they had cast the previous turn cycle, they were able to have both Cryptic Command and Force of Negation. Um, they also had Ice... I think they had Ice Fang Quaddle on their deck because I saw Ice Fang Quaddle off of one of the Goblin Guy triggers in Game 3. So they were a very interesting Bance uh, Stone Blade deck. The matchup felt really, really close. Um, but in the end, I was, wasn't able to get that last one point of damage across because a light, little bit of a greedy keep... I'm not going to lie, but they had the Force of Negation on that key turn, and that really kind of shut the game down for me. Uh, the final match, um, after kind of running into that, was uh, something similar to this. I'm not exactly sure of the particulars. Um, it was a Just Guy Stone Blade list. I do know that much. Uh, my opponent had a really kind of clanky game one draw. Uh, they had Mulligan the six. I was able to get there between uh, the Grim Lava Mancer and just my normal whatevers. Um, burn spells, burning them down. They cast a Batter Skull on turn 5 and then just died. Um, game 2 and Game 3, uh, especially Game 3, there was a missequence um, on my part. I had cast a Swift Spear. Had been smart enough not to cast the two spells in my hand, which were a Lightning Bolt and Skull Crack, into the face of a bunch of open mana. Um, my opponent at the end of turn... Uh, lightning bolted my Swift Spear. I cast both spells to save the Swift Spear, including the Skull Crack. Uh, my opponent then untapped Snapcaster Lightning Helixed the Swift Spear, got back up to 10 life, um, and then they were at 7. Um, I hesitated to cast my Exquisite Firecraft, not wanting to let my opponent know that they were dead to any other burn spell that they let resolve, so I you know, left a bunch of open mana on the table. Um, I drew a uh, Smash to Smithereens that was in my sideboard. The unfortunate part was that my opponent's um, only available target was when they cast PN Cure and Alar, and I drew the Smash after they untapped. So, and they never let down uh, the two in a red mana, so I could never smash the one of the tokens. And then I just died between that and Snapcaster Mage Beats. And then they cast a Lightning Bolt on the one end step. And then attack for lethal. Well, attack, attack me down to one and then flung a uh, Thopter at my face. So, kind of a disappointing ending. Um, lost to two Stone Blade decks. One matchup was felt very, very close. Uh, the Jeskai one, um, if any Burn players had any experience with the Jeskai control decks that were floating around... Um, maybe six, nine months ago, before the Is It Phoenix craze and some other stuff. Um, remembering how difficult that matchup could be, uh, throw Stoneblade in the mix and it gets really, really interesting. Um, I think those were two of my favorite matches, but they were very, uh, very tightly contested. It felt like we were a little bit behind, and... Um, each game, if I would have made di different decisions, there's a decent chance I could have pulled out either match. So, um, people are saying Stoneforge Mystic's bad for burn. I think the blue Stoneforge Mystic base decks are bad for burn. Um, I think the matchup's close. I think they're slightly favored if they're prepared. But I also think they might be a dog to jund. So, I think this format might settle down into a very interesting uh, cat and mouse game between the red aggressive decks, the Black Green X mid range decks and um, the Stone Blade decks with some, you know, Smattering of Urza decks, Tron decks. Uh, I saw a Dredge deck won the Classic. So there's going to be a lot of. Um, it's going to be a lot of interactive magic. And I think a lot of people are hugely excited for that. Uh, Storm. People are trying Storm, but I don't think it's that particularly well set up. I think Jun. Still has the tools to give Storm a headache. Uh, Burn's obviously a bad matchup. And I think the fact that these Stoneblade decks between Force of Negation and now that they're applying pressure, um, I think a lot of matchups that were previously decent matchups or good matchups for Storm have kind of gone out the window. And another deck I've seen popping up, um, people are trying to play humans. Uh, I don't know that humans a 
bad choice in the meta, but I don't think it's a good choice in the meta. Um, and then Tron? Tron obviously, you know, seems like it has good matchup against Jund, depending on how Jund configures. Seems like it has a decent matchup against these Stoneblade decks, although I did hear Stoneblade players saying they beat Tron to do X or Tron to do Y. So, a lot of interesting things going on in the meta right now. And then those Wurza decks kind of, you know, they won the Modern Open. Um, I saw them doing moderately well down at the, the MCQ. Um, so it looks like if that is what ends up settling in the meta, Burn is interestingly positioned. I think all of those matches um, of the what might end up being the top tier decks other than maybe Dredge are pretty reasonable matchups for Burn. So I think Burn might continue to be a good place in the meta, even with Hogak going bye-bye. Um, as far as going back to changes, um, I think the main changes I would make for right now is to cut a Searing Blaze, cut a Skewer of the Critics, get two Skull Cracks into the main um, to help fight the Life Gain, so we have the full four of. Um, I think two Path to Exile is fine for right now. The three Rest in Peace... This is my I don't want to lose to Dredge package. Um, I think people are really sleeping on Dredge, even with it winning the Classic this weekend. Uh, I think one of the things that I was thinking about yesterday um, was what an interesting place Dredge would be in in this format if it had Faithless Looting. Um, obviously Dredge isn't a great matchup for John. It's not a great matchup for Blue White X. Even with um, even with Stone Blade or Batter Skull into the mix, I don't know that Blue White is favored against uh, the old Dredge deck with Faithless Looting in the mix between you know things like Conflagrate and such. So I wonder if the banning of Looting was to specifically allow this meta to take shape. Um, Obviously, there are other decks that can sneak in here that can disrupt things. You know, maybe humans can adapt. Maybe Is a Phoenix can come back. Um, but I really think you're going to kind of see this cat and mouse game of like Tron, Burn, Jun, Stoneblade, Wurza. I think those are the five decks that the format might potentially rotate around. Um, obviously, you can throw in things like Hardened Scales, Affinity, um, you know, other decks that can in other of these mid-range stone blade decks, but I honestly think Jund is going to be the predator of those decks, and I think the blue, the blue-based ones are the best ones to fight the protection game of their Stone Forge Mystics. So you're gonna have a lot of white-based Stone Forge decks, um, blue-based Stone Forge decks, Jund, Burn, Tron, Wurza. There isn't a whole lot of like. Things like Bogles or Storm or a lot of these decks just don't seem to be performing well in the face of all this. So I really think it's going to be an interesting dance the next couple weeks until the format settles down and people discover decks that kind of counter, you know, all those strategies you would name. You know, things like Amulet Titan or Dredge if they find the right build without and people continue to disregard Graveyard Hate. Um... I think the format's in a very interesting place. I'm kind of glad that I went down and played in the MCQ. It was a lot of fun. It was very nerve-wracking. It had been since... Uh, the last time... Last time I played in a bigger event of like 100 plus people in paper was probably a PPTQ two years ago. So I haven't gone to any GPs or anything of late, so was interesting to play in kind of like kind of a nerve-wracking event that wasn't like a local like 30 or 40 person player tournament. I'm not saying those events aren't nerve-wracking, but like my heart was pounding like the entire time. So it was just kind of an insane rush. It'd been a while since I'd done that. So it was a lot of fun. Probably been rambling on long enough here, but I want to thank everybody for tuning into this video. Um 
want to let you guys know how I did, what went on, uh, probably what will be the updated sideboard list, which will probably basically be this list, cutting for two skull cracks in the main, a la what uh, I think Carson did, Carson did with his uh, his list a couple months ago, or a month or so ago, to get that third and fourth skull crack in the main deck. Um, I don't really like Grim Lava Mancer in the meta as a whole. But I think as a one of in the main deck, it's a pretty decent counter. Especially against these blue-white X Stone Blade decks, especially the non just guy variety, like the straight blue-white ones. Don't tend to run a ton of lot Rally Removal. Having an onboard answer to Stoneforge Mystic is pretty nice. Um, not having to resolve a spell through a force of negation. Just being able to go tap a mana, shoot it, gone, and then buying yourself three turns before uh batter skull comes down. Um, it does appear like the secondary equipment of choice is sort of Easton Famine. That's an interesting development. Um, obviously, it plays very well into the blue-white strategy of being able to hold up mana. Uh, not really else a whole lot I took away from that. I think Jun will adjust to uh, red, red aggro being in the format. Um, some Jun players down there were saying Burn's a terrible matchup. I personally think it's a really close matchup, depending on how much... The Jun players want to pay attention to it. But, uh, anyways, that's my rambling. Just want to thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what your experiences have been so far in this new meta. And I'll get back at you guys with another video soon. This has been John from MTG Nexus. Everybody, have a great day.